All right, I hear you. Let's get and do a bit of cooking, eh? Good day, YouTubers, and welcome to, I think it's day 10, is it day 10? Of the thing which we're told is not a lockdown, but uh, I'm sure many of you will be feeling as though it's a lockdown. So I'll call it a lockdown. But enough about that. Let's do a bit of cooking. And today I'm going to do something completely different, which was a suggestion by a couple of viewers. I've looked back through all the comments and I can't for the life of me find the original two comments. I can't remember if it's on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter. And they suggested a what's in the cupboard kind of thing, sort of ready, steady cook, where you have a look, see what ingredients you've got, and you come up with something to uh, fill the belly, please the eye, and uh, there you go. So if you're one of the two that came up with the idea, then uh, let me know, and I'll post a little comment at the top and pin it at the top. And uh, there you are. Right, let's have a look, see what's in the cupboard. <laughs> right. Hmm, I mean, I don't have a huge amount in the cupboards at the moment, but uh, what have we got here? Got some whole grain rice, um, an avocado. I try to have an avocado and a banana. Uh, for my breakfast every day, but avocados especially, they're a, they're a superfood and they're great for, you know, the immune system and all kinds of stuff. The absolute, have to, I have to have onions in my cupboard, um, for the simple reason, I mean, it's often pointed out that uh, I eat a lot of onions and garlic, um, and that's mainly because they're very good for you. Onions, and especially garlic, they help with the respiratory, respiratory, they help with your breathing. Um, so yeah, and garlic is good for immunity as well. Kills off all manner of things. Um, yeah, banana there. Got some Madras spice paste, a new jar. I don't really fancy making a curry. Uh, I mean, I've made a curry before. Um, so I'll probably revisit the curry uh, at a later date. Organic aduki beans. I'd never heard of them, and a couple of weeks ago I fancied making a chilli, but for some reason or other I went in three supermarkets in Garstang, and there wasn't a single tin of kidney beans to be found anywhere. Plenty of baked beans and tinned tomatoes and so on, um, but for some reason people suddenly fancied kidney beans. So there you go. Uh, yeah, as I said, baked beans. I, mean, I fancy making something a bit more adventurous than beans on toast. I've got some plain flour and some self-raising flour and uh, tins of fish. Right, let's have a look in the fridge. Hmm, well there isn't a huge amount in the fridge. Some orange juice, a bit of bacon, some tomatoes and uh, a few Mushrooms left over. Yes. Mm. Ah, all oh, right. Uh, there's some battered Scottish haddock fillets. Yes. That wouldn't be very adventurous, though, would it? Just, just fry up some uh, battered fillets. Or there's some pork bellies. Right, yeah, pork bellies. And on this shelf, I have four, um, where are we? There we are. Four of these chilies. They're not large and they're not small. They're not the uh, super small, like super hot widow makers, those kind of things. Jalapenos, what are they called? And, oh, garlic. Right. 
Well, I think I'm going to make something with pork bellies and garlic and and uh, onions and chilies. Right. So I've got the ingredients. There's the pork belly. I'm going to have three pieces of that. An onion. As I said, I like onions because I like them and they're good for you. Garlic. Um, I have, what is it, the five mushrooms. They're, they're getting a bit shriveled, but uh, I'm going to fry them, so who cares. And the chilies. And it got me thinking that I have a jar of, well, it's very little left, just a, a little bit in the bottom of, it's a sweet caramelized red onion chutney. So what I'm gonna do with that is add a little bit of warm water, shake it up and pour that on the dish near the end of the cooking. Um, and it's, I can smell it now. It's quite sweet. So it will add a sort of sweetness. So I'm thinking a sort of stir fried not in a wok, but I'll be frying it and stirring it, so it is kind of stir-fried. Stir-fried pork bellies in a sweet chilli and garlic assemblage. And of the whole grain rice, I think if I fry that in another pan, and I'll put an egg in it. So we'll have an egg fried rice. Let's get on with that then. One of my well used stainless steel pans. Whoa, nice. Into that a little sunflower oil. I've stopped using olive oil in, well, in frying at least. It's nice in salads and so on, and dressings. On a lowish heat. Let's get chopping. Oh, it's been uh, an interesting 10 days. A little bit up and down. As I imagine, everyone has been trying to figure out just how this whole lockdown business sort of works. Trying to keep a semblance of normality and probably more importantly, sanity. Get them in the pan, turn the heat back up a little bit. While they're frying away nice and gently, I'll just thinly slice the mushrooms. Gone a bit springy, but doesn't make any difference. And I'll stick those in the pan. Yeah, my uh, internal body clock over the past few days. It's all over the place. And I'm currently sleeping during the day and I'm awake at night because at the moment it really makes no difference whatsoever. And I'm finding that sleep is very very nice indeed and quite therapeutic since this whole thing started i'm currently sleeping anywhere between 10 and 14 hours a day in any 24 hour period i'm on a sort of uh, sort of standby like your telly I'm conserving energy and I'm finding that the more I'm asleep, the less I'm worrying. I 
and that can go in as well. Starting to brown nicely. And then the chilies. As I say, these aren't uh, ridiculously hot, but they do have a nice thingy to them. I bought these from Booze and Garstang. A bag of five for about 90p. And they have a great flavour as well. It's regularly mentioned in comments and reviews on Amazon, especially on Amazon um, and on YouTube, that I think I'm a TV chef and that I'm trying to turn Travels by Narrowboat into a t TV cooking show. And in they go. Stir them up. Oh. Try not to throw them everywhere. Yeah, we're getting this nice colour coming on. Reds and greens there. And rustic browns. I'll just put a little drop more. Oop. I'll put a large drop more of sunflower oil in there. And then we chop up the pork, which I'm going to put into chunks like that. No, I never intended to turn it into a cooking show. The only reason I did a bit of cooking at the beginning was I was trying to show every aspect of living on a canal boat. And I wanted to show that it's possible to cook proper meals and it's not just a case of sticking some oven ready meal in the in the oven or living on takeaways which you couldn't do I mean it would cost a fortune wouldn't it but to my complete and utter astonishment it became very popular and you wanted to see more right let's get that in the pan Yeah, this is coming along nicely. Yeah, I've often received a considerable amount of abuse, not just about my cooking, um, but a lot of personal abuse. Some, some comments and some reviews are so, they're like, what? You know, oh. And all to, you know, and to do my cooking. And I'm going to light the back burner. Turn that down a little bit. And I'm going to put that on there and let it fry away. Like so. Because I'll get another pan. Put some sunflower oil in that. Let's open up the rice. Try and break it up a bit. And then I'll put that straight in the frying pan. And we'll break it up. And while the rice is gently frying, I shall crack an egg into a bowl, like so. Whisk it up. And then I'm just going to pour that all over the rice and now it's important to keep stirring because it's instantly 
I'm going to try to become an omelette. And we're instantly getting all these little bits of omelette throughout the rice. Or as is more commonly known, egg fried rice. Easy style. So what I shall now do, because it's basically there, I'll put this on the back burner, turn the heat off and give this a good stir. The pork is basically there, it takes very little time at all. Spicy food is great for uh, getting rid of all manner of ailments. So I'll put a little drop of water, not a huge amount, probably about half the jar. Give it a shake, like so. And I'm going to pour that all over. Like so. And just give it a good stir. How are we doing for heat? I'll just turn the heat up a little bit. And that's the uh, caramelised sweet onion chutney pickle thing. Oh, gorgeous smell. So while that's reducing, this whole meal, I mean, I, I imagine there's going to be, be two meals in here for me. Um, it's often said that I create quite a lot of food and uh, no, I don't eat it all in one go. What I tend to do is any I don't eat, I put it in a takeaway tray, put the lid on it and when it's cooled down, I bung it in the fridge and then I'll have that the next day or the day after. So we're looking at a packet of microwave rice here, which was, it's from Aldi, it's 89p. We have the egg, whatever an egg costs. Um, then the pork, the pork bellies, there's six of them and they're a couple of quid in Aldi. I've had half, so that's a pound. So we're looking at about two pounds so far. The chilies, uh, there's five in a bag, but there was four but 80p, so we're looking at £2.80. An onion, garlic, mushrooms, the, the remains of that caramelised red onion, which I've had on sandwiches and things. So all in, you're looking at about £3, £3.50 for the entire meal. Bearing in mind, I get two meals out of that. So we are looking at about one pound seventy-five. Right, I'd say it's ready. Let's get dishing up. First up, then, the egg fried rice. Should do there. There's another. Another meal's worth there. Yep. Mm, bit of rice. Mmm. Yum, yum. And then the sweet chili pork. Table, don't I? Mm. Mm. 
Well, this looks quite delicious. Pork. Mm. Could have done with more of the sweet chilli, um, you know, the sweet caramelised chutney. But that was all I had. But there's certainly a hint of it. So if I was to do this again, I'd put a bit more of that in. Mm. The pork is nicely cooked. Delicious at any price. I don't know if they have uh, the series elsewhere in the world, but in Britain there was a programme, I think it's still going, called Ready Steady Cook. And various guest chefs would turn up each week, two, two teams, and they'd have a member of the public with them which the member of the public would bring along a bag of ingredients. The chefs had no idea where it was and they had to come up with something. Um, mind you, there was Anthony Worrell Thompson, his guest team member, uh, brought along a bag of potatoes. So, uh, yeah. Mm. Wow. Right, well, yep. Yeah. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. And cheers for now. Ta-da. I'm having this again.